Yesterday I spoke about peace and how Jesus is, is that rest and that peace. Um, but here in Matthew chapter 10, verse 34, verse 34 says this. It says, Think not that I have come to send peace on earth. Now why would the Prince of Peace say that he didn't come to send peace on earth? Look at this. I come not to send peace, but a sword. That's Matthew 10, verse 34. Now, the spirit of man uh, would not understand this. They wouldn't have any spiritual discernment. Uh, Jesus Christ came to bring a sword to all of those false pieces. See, the world that tries to deliver a false peace to you to grab hold of. But Jesus Christ came to take a sword to the false peace and to give you the true peace, the real light, the Holy Spirit of God that dwells in us, among us. Amen. Glory to God. Paul was also, in the book of Romans chapter 1, the Apostle Paul had gone on a journey finally to Rome, and um, he had seen this so much, so, so much. Um, he had been in synagogues where he had saw them um, trying to worship God, uh, circumcising the flesh would profit them nothing, only to be circumcised in the heart. Um, many are running to those same wolves in sheep's clothing today that are trying to circumcise your flesh to show you off and put you in their trophy case. In other words, they're trying to fill their bellies with your soul. And Jesus warned us about it. If the blind lead the blind, will they not both fall into the ditch? Uh, the Lord Jesus, the true Prince of Peace, the one that came to take that stony heart out of us and circumcise our hearts and put a heart of flesh in us so that he could write his laws, his covenants, his statues, and all of his promises on our hearts. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 2, verse 18, or excuse me, Romans chapter 1, verse 18, guys. Paul says this. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. They say that they have the peace of God, but they're holding it in air with the spirit of air. They have not allowed the Prince of Peace to take the sword to their false peace. Amen. They're holding on to a false peace and calling it the truth. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. Remember, no lie is of the truth. It's not, you, you have to choose, guys. How can you serve two different masters? The Bible says you will either hate one and love the other, or else love one and hate the other. For you cannot serve God and mammon. You can't, cannot serve the truth and unrighteousness, and you can't serve the truth. Um, you have to serve excuse me you have to serve the truth in righteousness not unrighteousness um, the truth said you must serve him in spirit and in truth jesus said that he's the truth hallelujah to the lamb amen for the invisible things verse 20 of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen they're clearly seen all around us amen being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and godhead so that they are without excuse. There is no excuse. At the day of judgment, you will not have any excuse. Well, God, you had this preacher preaching to me that I could still um, wallow and mire in my sin. That's not an excuse. Jesus came, the true peace, of Prince of Peace came, that he would set you free. The Bible says, whom the Son sets free is free indeed, that you would grab hold of the promises of God and press into the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Not to continue to have a cloak for your sin, to make excuses on why you are sinning, because I'm still in this sinful and carnal flesh. No, guys, don't make excuses. Crucify the flesh, is what the scripture says, with all of its passions, its lusts, and desires, and grab hold of the head, Jesus Christ, who is the true Prince of Peace, and He's the true truth. Amen. Hallelujah. Because that, verse 21. When they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and, and their foolish heart was 
darkened. Amen. Jump down here. Now just continue. Professing themselves to be wise. See, they think that they're wise by grabbing hold of a false truth. But they're not wise. They're very unwise. They became fools, the Bible says. And they changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, into birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts. See, the lust of their own hearts was dark. Jesus came that you would not abide in the darkness, but that you would abide in the light, that you would circumcise your heart to him, that you would allow him to live through you. This happens in the inward man, on the inside. Amen. The word of God, you hearing the word of God producing a faith and that conviction from your darkness, your sin, you turning, repenting away from it and grabbing hold of grace. Amen. Jesus offering you grace, grabbing hold of it and resting in the promises of God for all the promises of yours. They're, they're all yours, guys. All you have to do is receive the grace of God and walk in it. Put on Christ. Have the mind of Christ. Let the love of Christ indwell in your heart richly. Amen? Amen. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the Creator. They're serving their own Father who is the devil. Jesus addresses that in John chapter 8. He tells the Pharisees, you honor your father, the devil, for he was a liar from the beginning and there is no truth in him. Uh, just because you say that you're Abraham's seed in this world, no, your fruit must show it. Amen. Faith is dead without works. How can a good tree produce bad fruit? Well, it can't. It can't. Jesus made that crystal clear that a good tree only produces good fruit. And a bad tree will produce bad fruit. Um, they're trying to say, well, we can't always produce good fruit uh, because we're stuck in this sinful flesh. Uh, those are lies, and the truth is not in those people. Uh, they haven't grabbed a hold of the truth. Uh, they may feel the presence of the truth, but they haven't invited him in, and they haven't laid hold of the truth. Um, they're not taking it. They're not taking it with seriousness at all. Uh, those people are in trouble. They're condemning themselves. As Jesus said, the word that I speak will condemn you in the last day. And in the book of Ezekiel, if you guys will turn with me real quick to the book of Ezekiel, I'm just going to read in chapter 6. I'm going to read exactly what Ezekiel said um, in chapter 6. He says this, And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, this is verse 1 and 2, Set thy face toward the mountains of Israel, and prophesy against them. What am I going to prophesy? I'm going to prophesy the grace and the love and the long suffering and the mercy that God is calling your, his people to repent, to turn from their sins, and to grab hold of his truth. Amen. And say, ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord God. Thus saith the Lord God to the mountains, to the hills, to the rivers, and to the valleys. Behold, I, even I, will bring a sword. Well, that sword is Jesus Christ because he said that in Matthew 10. I didn't come to bring peace, but a sword. Why? Because he loves you. And he wants to take a sword to that old man so that that new man can live. Amen. Upon you and I will destroy your high places. Your altars shall be desolate. And your images, what do we read in the book of Romans? Your images shall be broken. And I will cast down your slain men before your idols. And I will lay the dead carcasses of the children of Israel before their idols. And I will scatter your bones round about your altars in all your dwelling places. The city shall be laid waste, and the high places should be desolate, and your altars may be laid waste and made desolate. Your idols may be broken and cease, and your images may be cut down. How? By the sword of God, Jesus Christ. Amen. Grab hold of his promises. Amen. Glory to God. Your works may be abolished, and the slain shall fall in the midst of you, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. He didn't come to bring peace, but he came to bring a sword. Because he loves you. He demonstrated that at the cross for you and I. Amen. May the grace of Jesus Christ be with each and every one of us. God bless, guys. Love you.